Okay, so I'm just connecting up the pump and that figure number you're looking at there, C011527 is the figure number you're looking for for that type of pump. Simple connection to connect it up, it's just live neutral and earth. There's an earth screw there, put a ring connector on it and um, clamp that up and then a live and a neutral to connect in and make off the gland for the flex. Here I'm using a rubberized flex to 0.75 which is uh, more than enough for a 300 watt motor even with its startup current. So that's it, pop the cover back on that and that's wired back up just to an ordinary fuse and a plug. Okay, so here I'm going to put together the connections for the vein pump. Um, these come with all sorts of foam in them to stop any tiny bits of debris getting in there because it can damage the veins. Um, I originally was going to use some plastic fittings for this but as you'll see in the video, um, these kind of fittings are just physically not strong enough. As soon as you get these anywhere near tight, they just shear off. So um, they're not suitable for connecting up the male fittings in these. I'm quite happy with the quality of the um, John Guest elbows and things like that, but where they've got a male fitting in there, as soon as you get it anywhere near tight, it just snaps off clean, so I um, won't be using them. So what I decided to use was the stainless steel uh, BSB fittings. These are 3 8 um, T's, where I tapped out earlier the first connection on the um, RO housing to 3 8 I've used the 3 8 um, m and elbow off there, going to a 12 mil by 3 8 pneumatic uh, fitting connector. These are rated up to I think a couple of hundred PSI so they're plenty strong enough. Um, so that will be the connection in the RO housing side and then um, using those to connect 12 mil coming in to the vein pump. Um, this one's going to be for the suction side off the filters and here's the one I've already made up for the um, for the pressure side. So this will have a um, 11 bar gauge on it and that will be made into this end the outlet side, make this end into the delivery side and then um, put that back onto the pump motor. Um, pretty straightforward quite fitting thing. Um, these I give about 10 wraps on a 3 8 thread but it depends how tight or loose the threads are if they're fairly tight you'll get away with the 10 wrap or the PTFE if they're quite loose I tend to like using Loctite 55 um, to make the thread connection stronger but these are quite tight so I'd only use um, PTFE tape on them um, ideally you don't want to use any um, liquid jointing materials because they can foul the vein pump. And I totally didn't count. I guess I'm talking to you lot. How many wraps I put on there? So start again. One ish. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine. That's going to do. And just wind that on tight. And that will make into the 3 8 T. And just a ball and a small pair of, uh, I think these are 10s and 12s, Stimpsons. Just tighten that in. You don't have to go bananas on it. It's only 3.8. If you over tighten some of these fittings, you can split them. So just plenty. Tighten off. You can always 
top them up a little bit more if you do get a weep. That'll do. You have to tighten them all the way down because these fittings are quite tight, so uh, that's plenty enough. Same again for the M and F bend. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where I got these from because the I originally ordered them from eBay three. originally ordered them from eBay and after a week of waiting, a week of complaining and getting my money refunded, I eventually ordered them up from a company I've used for insulation and stuff like that before, um, JTM Plumbing Supplies, um, ordered these up yesterday at 10 o'clock and they were delivered at 10 o'clock this morning So, um, and they were cheaper as well, so that was a good turnaround. So that doesn't want to go in there, wants to go in the centre. Because what this side delivery, uh, the suction side is going to have on it is a um, vacuum gauge. So that'll be the pressure side that I'll be running at around about uh, 100 psi, which is just short of 7 bar. But on this side, it's just the feed from the um, filters that's going to be a low pressure just whatever uh, the, the pressure is coming off the um, shower pump which is going to be low it's going to be less than probably 0.1 of a bar um, what this will um, I'm hoping this will, will do um, I've used it on similar kind of things but not for this before is this is a vacuum gauge so if there's positive pressure there the needle will stay down on that bar and not move but if the filters start to block up what will happen is, is this needle will start to lift up, showing that there's a vacuum going into the inlet side. Um, and if you look at the literature for these um, vein pumps, um, when the inlet pressure gets to negative 0.2 bar, um, then that should be the point at which you uh, clean the filters out to prevent it going any further in, um, into a suction state. I mean, the best would be to have a slight positive pressure there, always supplying that with enough water, but so it doesn't cavitate. Um, 0 0.2 of a bar, of a negative bar, um, should be the maximum amount that it runs at, but I'll see what that actually works out to be when I've set it up. But that's the idea behind it. to do with that is if you put um, peristilsons onto an open-ended bend like that and then try and turn it you can squash these fittings and make them into an oval making the threads hard to start so what I need to do with that is start off by putting the bush into there for the quarter inch connection there that's a 3 8 by quarter inch bush which is for the gauge about 10 wraps. And by turning that into there, if you have to use your Stilsons on the bend, it will stop that. thread from getting uh, that female connection from getting crushed. I just need to tighten that up. Again, you wonder if these reasonably tight because they're going to hold a bit of pressure, but you don't need to go bananas. That'll be close enough. Can be a little 
little bit fiddly making these fittings in when they're not connected to a pipe which they'd normally be but it's easier to make them in on this and then just add them onto that Turn that till it's 90 degrees to that so when it sits in here I'll have that will be the suction side and that will be the delivery side like that with the gauges wrapped around one another so they clear each other. going to give this fittings already got um, a type of jointing compound already built onto that which is quite strong so it only needs a few wraps I'm just going to do four PTF here on here just as a backup It's a tape off that. Tidy it Just want to be careful that you don't get any. rubbish or anything down inside these because it can damage the veins these have got graphite veins inside there and they can get damaged by any bits of stuff getting stuck down there and see how tight that fitting is going into that. Yeah, it's quite tight. It only needs a bit of PTFE going on into it. And when you put in stainless steel fittings into brass, this is going to be a lot stronger than that. So if you go too mad, you, it is possible to split the housing. So just have to remember not to go bananas with it. It's going to lessen the amount of tape on there. I'm probably going to do just four or five wraps. Thank you. 
So that hasn't gone that far down into that, but that's as tight as I'd ever go with that first time. If it does weaken, then you can always take it out and rejoint it. That's quite tight. Just need to make this T piece on here. I've got to take that hardware back off again. So I forgot about it hitting onto the first piece that's making in there. So seems to hold back. There go with that. made up put these two gauges on pressure side onto the outlet and the vacuum gauge onto the inlet and that'll be ready to fit into the pump and piping up so there's the pump head assembly ready to connect up the 
in that side and out that side I'll get that on the motor and then get it piped up and then run you through the the setup once I get it up and running okay so I've got the recycle RO up and running I'm going into the pond. Uh, membranes are doing uh, 2.8 litres a minute into the pond and uh, 740 mil is waste out. Uh, we're about 79, uh, 790 mil a minute back into the pond dechlorinated. And uh, that's the setup. Those are the four Frotec 300 gallon a day membranes. These are the low pressure membranes that will reach their rated output at 50 psi. And I'm currently running at uh, around just over six bar, about 90 psi. Um, what we've got there on the back gauge, you can see there, is there's probably about uh, 0.09 of a bar of vacuum there um, but what I did find when I was filling this up is I primed the pump with water um, took this valve out just put a straight piece of pipe in there just to prime it through and to uh, vent it through with water so the pump was starting up uh, the vein pump with water already in it and when that didn't have the solenoid valve on it the vac gauge was running down at zero so that half inch solenoid valve is providing a little bit of, uh, of resistance to the water flow on this 12 mm pipe without it it's flowing straight through no vacuum pressure whatsoever and it's supplying enough but that's got a little bit of resistance on it um, I'll see how that pans out it might not be an issue at all if it is I'll either swap it out for a larger brass uh, solenoid valve or swap it over for a motorised ball valve um, they're a bit bigger and a bit bulky and they can be a bit noisy when they start up uh, but I'll see how that works out or I might change that over for a half inch brass solenoid valve I think it's because the bore on these valves is not the same as the half inch connections it's only small it's about 9 mil and that's one of the reasons why I use the 12 mil adapters on it because the 15 mil ones are actually a smaller bore than those. So the 12 mil is plenty enough to provide that with enough water, but the valve is causing the restriction. Um, I did test the filters um, before I set that all up. Um, that's 15 mil uh, speed fit pipe in black that's connected up to that. But what I done was I connected this off down had a pipe going into a bucket to see how much I could draw through that and I was getting about 9 litres a minute through that pipe so that's more than enough uh, that I need to run this so there's plenty enough supply uh, in that 15 mil pipe because it's only really using about 3.5 litres uh, a minute so there's the teaser I connected in for the um, TDS meter. Um, TDS is already reasonably low. I'm down at around about 1, 110 um, TDS. So that's uh, quite reasonable going out there from the membranes. That's after the four membranes, the waste going out uh, and then going into the pond at uh, TDS of 9, which is fine. Uh, what I am actually going to be doing is um, I'm going to be adding another uh, RO setup here. The original uh, recycle RO that I got running the 600 gallon a day, the four 150 membranes. I was thinking of reselling it, but um, I didn't think I'd really get anything worth uh, any real amount of money back from what it was what it cost to put together. So. What I decided to do is to have a backup system of a mains RO system on here, the 600 gallon a day, um, 
and what I'll be able to use that for is if I have to treat the pond for anything or if I want to add some RO to mix it with the dechlorinated water that's going through all these filters if I want to cut that to make a lower TDS going in is I'll be able to blend that with some mains water um, reverse osmosis that I can use to add to the dechlorinated um, input to the pond if I want a little bit purer water going in but I'll see how I go with that but I'm going to set it up because you could use that RO if you have to treat the pond for anything you'll have to turn your recycle RO off but if you're just trickling in then without adding any RO is you can cause your parameters to start shifting which isn't ideal so you can then mix it with mains RO and dechlorinated water um, if you have to take the uh, recycle R off for any reason like treating a pump for flutes or anything like that uh, it's making a little bit of a hum the motor um, not a lot compared, compared to the, the rest of the pumps and that going in the filter house um, but it does drum on that wall a little bit I might either add some uh, a little bit more foam to the underside of that pump to isolate it a bit more or do what I said I was originally going to do is move these three cylinders closer together take these connections out that I test with to make a gap on the floor down here mount the motor on the floor and then feed up and into the membrane so that with the motor on the floor it should drum a lot less that way but I'll, I'll see how I go it's not too bad um, that's it all set up and working what I ended up using on there was the um, 3 8 MNF stainless steel elbow um, to a 3 8 by 12 mil pneumatic fitting uh, and then pneumatic fittings into the uh, 3 8 stainless steel tees there and then stainless steel hex 3 8 hex nipples into the vein pump and that seems to be running quite nicely um, one thing I've noticed with the um, with the fan controller is if you turn this down too far the motor will literally stop running and it won't supply it with enough voltage although it does make it a bit quieter and it does reduce the wattage a little bit um, if you do turn that down too much it, it, they won't have enough power to turn the motor and it will just stop running at that point so you can only turn it down so far kind of thing um, but what I've found is that running at um, 90 psi uh, I'm getting optimum output from my um, RO membranes of about 2.8 litres a minute uh, if I turn the pressure up significantly, it can take it up to um, over uh, 100 psi. It doesn't really increase the output that much. You know, a, a, a point of a, a mil, uh, point of a litre a, a minute, not really a, an awful lot of change. So I'm quite happy running that at 90 psi. That's what it seems to work best at. Um, waist out, still running at. Uh, 740 mil a minute and 790 mil, 8 mil going in to replace the water that's lost from that. You can see there where I've got my pipe going into my, this is the shower return with a clear piece of 2 inch or inch and a half plastic. That's the, with the blue tape around it, is the RO input and then the, the dechlorinated input is next to it about to see there on the camera how much water's coming in from each side. So we'll give that a run, see how it, how it works out and it uh, seems to be performing quite nicely. Um, what I'll do is I'll give a rundown of the costs of all the parts and where I've got them in the description so I'll show you where I've got these uh, membrane housings from, all the fittings, these John Guest uh, acetal fittings where where I got those from, the pump uh, gauges and the stainless steel fittings, 
where we've got the vane pump from and where we've also got the motor that I waited nearly two months from. There's a lot of places you can get this from. Um, basically, the, the more you pay, the quicker you should get it, and the cheaper it is, the longer you have to wait. Some places have got quite a long back order. Um, about the cheapest I did see this online was about £78, but um, I did ring them, but they said that they were on back order and wouldn't guarantee when they'd get them, so uh, I ended up going somewhere else, but still ended up waiting a reasonable length of time. Um, that's it, there's the solenoid valve for the uh, transformer there. And that's running just off the uh, fan speed controller. These are just plugged in at the moment while I'm testing it, but I have got the um, timers here. That'll be my RO flush timer. And that's the RO pump timer. And then the pump timer controls the circuit there that feeds both the valve and the pump, so you make sure they both come on at exactly the same time. And then what I'll eventually do is this is going to be my main Zaro setup here. But I'll have a flush valve connected into it and then a pump and a valve on there for the mains water. And then that setup is going to be here next to this setup so that I can add um, direct main Zaro, mix it in with my dechlorinated uh, as and when I need to. There's the pre-filters down there. Everything seems to be okay with that. I've gone connected that up in the 15mm. Runs around back there and then into that valve. And that is just a half inch stainless steel hex nipple, I drilled into this fitting, tapped it out with a half inch tap, made the, the nipple into it and then this is a half inch full bore um, PVCU with stainless steel ball uh, valve and adapter in there and then changed over to 15mm um, John Guest black speed fit. filters these are pretty much standard 20 micron pleated filter in there and the 5 micron pleated filter in that one and as I found when I was running it with the uh, me original recycle RO is um, not getting a lot of dirt go through to these at all anyway so these should last even longer before they need changing I've got a vacuum gauge there that if that increases significantly I'll know that these uh, filters are getting blocked. Um, it may well be that the pressure starts dropping a bit when the uh, filters are getting blocked but I should be able to monitor that on the vacuum side as well. Uh, especially if I change over this valve for one that shows uh, zero on the vacuum line then any increase on there will show that the filters are blocking. It, all running nice and tidy and then I'll probably do another video when I set up this uh, second board for a main Zaro addition so that I can use that um, if I have to take the recycle RO offline or if I want to use it in addition to the uh, dechlorinated water to soften it a little bit there you go so I've just put my energy monitor onto the pump running at the minute. And you can see on there it's currently running at uh, 173 watts. So I've just did that down. And that's providing my 2.8 litres a minute with 0.74 litres to waste. 
at uh, 90 psi. a little bit of a saving on the um, a little bit of a saving on the 245 watts that it's rated for um, and like I say it's not on all the time I'm currently running this for um, three hours a day in total split up over three one hour section so it runs for an hour and then it's off for about four hours then another then off for another few hours and then another hour and I'll run it so that it's mainly going to be running uh, two times at night and then once during the day just so that um, if mad by the pond I don't really notice any noise from it or anything like that but I'll see how that runs to start off with uh, and that may change but that's just altering the, the timers to however you want to run it well that's how I'm decided to run it for now Also, uh, I'll just turn that off now. What I've done for these connections to the solenoid is these originally had some uh, RC radio controller type connectors on them. I've put spade end connectors on there and then I've crimped them onto the spade end connectors. But what I've also done then is soldered the connections in to make them more secure so there's no chance of the wires accidentally getting pulled out or anything like that and then had a heat shrinking tube over this section because the wire is quite thin to strengthen it and then put heat shrink tube over the spade connector and another piece here as well. I've done that for both of those solenoids as you can see there. Heat shrink tube that was crimped onto a 6.3mm spade connector, um, soldered, soldered the connection inside here so it's easy to do and heat shrink over there and then slid with a heat shrink cable over the two there just to keep it nice and tight and uh, secure so there's no chance of these things coming loose and uh, having any problems with them. <laughs> 